Well, it's the Sunday papers with Mike and Greg. So get out of bed. Sunday papers. Wow. Three, two, one. And I'm Read all about it. Read all go. about it. Sunday papers coming to you from the west side of Los Angeles, home of liberals and libtards and snowflakes and softies and Democrats or whatever you want to call us. We're here, baby. I'll tell you what. It's sunny out. Something I didn't get uh, in Amsterdam. We'll talk about that. Yep. But spring is pop. Spring is uh, popping up all over the place. Spring is. I played golf the last three days in a row. Whoa. Yep. All yeah, right. Here comes the tease day. of the show. Yep. We are going to uh, go over our Oscar results. Listen, I haven't. All I can tell you is it's really close. Our picks on the ballot of who won. You had an impressive one, though. I will say, I think best actress. But we'll get to that. We got the St. Patty's Day show. We're going to talk about it in a second. I saw a really funny half of a movie, and I had the wisdom uh, about. Th- three or four scenes in to then fast forward only to half of the movie scenes. That's great. Can't wait to talk about <laughs> it. And then we have a call. We're going to have a call with an expert on the Kate Middleton disappearance. This isn't a bit. This is our friend Gail. And I guess she, even Tom O'Neill says she's the biggest gossip in the world when it comes to this story, which is saying a lot because Tom O'Neill knows everything. And he says, Gail puts him to shame. And uh, she's an Anglophile, which uh, we are not. Uh, the royal family, to me, is only interesting in things like this. When things go horribly wrong, I'm very interested. Same. So I I now, it's hard to ignore this story. Yes. Because it's a little weekend at Bernie's. And uh, a lot, Russia used to do this a lot. Russia, back in the uh, 80s, would be like, uh, no, no, still alive. Still, yep. The guy we haven't seen forever. And then eventually like, oh, he just passed. Really? There was a moment there where Putin was disappearing. And then he was, uh, there was a lot of rumors about him being very sick. Remember that? And he was like on an IV drip for long term. Yeah. And I think like Kate Middleton, he had a tummy tuck and a breast lift. That's right. He's and then, he, then all of a sudden he was shirtless on a horse. Oh, I mean, it really is like... Uh, like she will be. It, it's it's pretty amazing the shape that that guy's in and how manly he is when you look at the two guys that we got, you know, our two he, candidates. Uh, yeah, although I think Putin's slipping, which of oh, course yeah, he for is, sure. you know? Yeah. Uh, and he's having a little, uh, little brain fog, I think. Um, but yeah. Oh, is he also? I... I, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I've seen people be like, hey, you know, he's slipping too. But can you imagine one of us, even at our age, which is 20 years younger than these guys? Like, we'd be like, well, wait, what am I? Where am I again? Yeah. Oh, my God. My brain is so bad lately. You, I've, uh, you turn around to your people. Like, you haven't let me have a masturbation break in three <laughs> yeah, weeks. How do you expect right, me? Right. I have no time to myself. Yeah. Um. I have had three incidents in the last two months where I show up to a gig and I was supposed to bring a feature act and I forgot to. (laughs) And then another one six months ago where two feature acts showed up at the same time. So I had to pay one of them out of my pocket. So what do you do when you don't show up with someone? They get somebody local at the last minute. Like most comedy clubs have uh, door people that are comedians. It's kind of like the thing that the comedy store started. Like if anybody could ever make a documentary about who has worked the door at the comedy store, Denman, maybe you can look that up, but I can tell you off the top of my head, Mark Marin, Ari Shafir, um, Sam Kinison, Sam Kinison, Punky Johnson. He said, all right, she's on SNL. Um, um well, but are you just want that club? Because clubs Tony generally yeah but i think the store really started it as oh. a as a kind of a, a minor league and then like to get the job as security at the store you have to audition your stand-up has to be auditioned first wow 
And so luckily a lot of clubs do that now. And so, well, Rogan, <laughs> Ro oh, Brian Simpson, Rogan has brought that down there because yes. when I saw Holtzman that time, uh, before you went down there, uh, two guys and Holt Holtzman had his own show and went on last. Two of them were employees, like they were wearing the shirts and they were really good. Right. Yeah. Um, so Brian Simpson, he's listening. Yeah, he's great. Uh, but I mean, going back way back, there was a bunch of big names. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to it. It might take a minute to find, um, tonight. Well, no, last night, as you're hearing this show, last night was the St. Patrick's station. I, I think it's it the 16th night. annual. I know. Believe me, this is always a fun idea and, you know, booking it is a pain in the balls. And then, uh, because, you just you're just asking a favor. I don't know why people consider it a favor. I pay them a lot of money, and um, you know don't I tell disperse. Me, don't tell me that. Well, don't no. You don't. You don't make a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm doing five minutes. I don't have anything. I'm, I might talk about Amsterdam. Like I'm going to in a second, just because I kind of had a funny take on Amsterdam. But that's how little I got. Do the Mexican milfs joke? Yeah, I know. But isn't this the same crowd that comes to see me? Yeah, but they love it. They love that joke. All right. I want. Yeah. At one point, I'll probably just be like, "All right, you guys want to, you want to hear some jokes?" <laughs> you do the classics. Like now, it's time for the classics. Mm -hmm. um, no, and then I always feel like it is. It's the same people, so I feel like I got to do new material every year, which I have. But a lot of it is filthy, and my wife is there, and her friends are there, and so I can't do my jokes about having sex with her because it's creepy. I think it's creepy anyway. I think I'm gonna start moving away from sex with my wife jokes now that I'm 57. Yeah, it could have happened uh, 20 years ago, maybe. <laughs> Breastfeeding? Hey. Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, people love it. They love it. I keep it yeah, I keep it clean. I talk about Mexican MILF. That's right. Very separate, and it's a universally beloved demo. And your and your daughter wiping her pee and then putting it back on the toilet paper roll. Real That's classy. universal. What's personal is universal. That's what they say to writers. So I went down, I visited my mom in Florida last week, and oh boy, it was so Florida. Just <laughs> a lot of old people complaining. And uh, somebody referred to it as uh, an organ recital, because everybody goes, well, his kidney's bad. Oh, my liver's shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a sneak peek. So I'm heading there Tuesday. Because my dad's having just a simple thing where they burn his heart. It's called an ablation. So I'm going down there for that. Ugh. And uh, and so I'll be in a lot of the similar, the, this medical community in Florida, which is a ripoff. It's as so you corrupt. Out. It's so corrupt. You have to sign up for concierge service. Otherwise, they don't answer your calls. And it's three months to see a doctor. Literally, not only do you pay a copay and a deductible, uh, plus you pay for your insurance, but then you pay about $4,000 a year, so they take your calls. They call a concierge service down there. I and think I New York does a free it as market, well. A free market, but it's it's very, it's, it's, it's why nothing gets changed. One of the big reasons here in America is because Powerful and rich people don't have a problem with the healthcare system in this country. If you're rich, you can get some of the best care in the world. And right. uh, and you'll have insurance, and you've probably rigged that. Maybe it's even your own company. And No, it's the uh, people in the middle that get screwed because uh, if you're poor, you get Medicaid, and it's actually not bad at all. If you're rich, you get concierge service. If you're someone like me in the middle, I pay forty thousand dollars a year for my insurance and it's got a thousand dollar deductible per person and then tons of copays it's like i i can't fucking afford that this is crazy yeah uh i'll get to amsterdam in a second but one quick thing we took a boat tour uh the first day and the guy was actually from ireland with a brogue and but he's lived in amsterdam for like 15 years he's in love, it's his favorite place in the world and one thing he talked about was taxes and taxes are high there he goes and he goes, and I hate it. He goes, I have that Irish in me. I just fuck, fuck authority. Fuck you, like taking half of my paycheck. And he was, and 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 it came up a bunch. He's like, there's, you know, and he would criticize about like, there's the fucking tax, uh, you know, my tax money at work, like doing things we don't. 
But by the end, he was like, listen, you know, I've made a lot of jokes about taxes. Like the one thing I will say, especially to you Americans, because I hear so many complaints is I actually don't feel bad about paying taxes. He's like, we have universal health care. We have a great education system. And he just listed all of these things. He's like, so you actually see your tax dollars at work, especially in the form of health care. Like that is a perk. Just that money you would be paying like Americans do uh, if, you know, so it's it's another tax that we're paying here. Right. I don't I don't anticipate that universal health coverage would add forty thousand dollars to my tax bill. I think it would be quite quite a bit less than that. Well, first of all, they're saying it might not add, hardly add anything at all. There's theories. And listen, I know there's no ideal system, but Jesus Christ, it's we we got to find out some some system. No, it's broken. It's really fucking people up. And uh you know, without going into a whole long thing about this, but like young people, if you just crunch the numbers for the possibilities of young people ever owning a home, it's crippling. It's impossible. And meanwhile, BlackRock and all these big corporations are buying single family homes and turning them into rentals. The rents are through the roof and the and that causes housing prices to go. It's like our kids don't have a fucking chance. Thank God they uh, the earth will be ending soon because of the environment. So we'll be fine. Yep, it's going to shut us. It's going to shake us off like a dog coming out of the water. It's just going to be like, get off of me and we're all going to fly off. All right, so here was a little koozie debacle. Oh, uh, wait, first I want to list the comedians that worked the door at the comedy store. Okay. Ready for this? Yeah. David Letterman, Sam Kinison, Jim Carrey, Michael Keaton, Eric Griffin. Eddie. Mark Marin, And on a minor note, Bobby Lee. But that's a pretty good lineup. <laughs> That's an amazing list. Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Some of the home run hitters of all time. Yeah. Um, all right. So I am getting my act together and I felt pretty proud of myself. Like I, I, I don't know about you. You have to go away all the week. So I've been traveling a lot and uh, I've become so much worse at packing. Like I put it off. I, I'm like, uh, it's just, I used to just throw stuff in a bag. Now it's like, oh yeah, my meds, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, it's just getting harder with age. But this time I had my act together, including, you know what? I'm going away for a week and a half. I got to get out. Uh, I got to read all the, the koozie, you know, uh, emails and go on who hasn't gotten them. Let me take care of all that. I stuff I got six envelopes and I'm like, I'm, I'm going down on my scooter to rush to LAX, put them in the mailbox, go to the plane, fly out. So that's what I do. I get to the airport. There are the goddamn envelopes <laughs> and I, and they're chunky. Remember these are chunky. And by the way, oh, I am no. packed to the gills. Like I can't Ugh. even slide. So of course in the airport I go, um, where's there a mailbox? I mean, only by definition, only people who are traveling are in this airport. So postcards, stuff like that. No, there isn't one. And I, and I've run into that before. So now I brought six koozies to Amsterdam, Bruges. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. And a uh, fuck <laughs> the U uh, S stamp, U S stamp is worthless over there. So Justin in Portland, Oregon, Patrick in Lebanon, Oregon. God, I hope I didn't screw up and put the two Oregons. Uh, John in Tucson, Arizona. Oh my Jeff God. in Kenmore, Washington. And two, good Lord, Carrie. Carrie in Litchfield Park. Carrie, it's, it's a, Carrie tried to get three koozies. She got one. She's getting a gift for two other people, I think, two dudes. I've, this is the second time I'm sending it or third time to one of them, second time to the other. And meanwhile, by the way, the envelopes you can see here are a little beat up. I, I look at the creases. I don't know if they're going to get there now, but fuck it. <laughs> they're in the mail. I, have you considered doing, um, delivery for other Suicide? companies? Yes, for I other have. people? Doing what? You, uh, like doing packaging and delivering of merch for other people. Cause it seems like something. That's yeah. worked out really well for you. My my second career? Yeah. I think I, it could be my act three for sure. <laughs> but it was kind of like bringing, you know how some people travel with a gnome or that little cutout guy? Right. Like I Listen, I brought your koozies to Amsterdam. You I mean, should have taken pictures of you standing in front of whorehouses <laughs> with the koozies. 
Um, <laughs> all right. So my little take on amps, I was over there visiting my uh, oldest daughter, Sophie, who's in her semester abroad there. So after walking around and almost getting killed by bicycles, uh, like constantly, it's like every time you, you, you're you at a corner, it's like the pack of kids from E.T. on the bikes is just tearing ass through <laughs> and lots of old women, really old on bicycles and they're not stopping. Uh, and I, anyway, after a while, I'm like, you know what this city is? Uh, it's like a bunch of 14 year old boys got together and they're like, dude, we're starting a city. <laughs> Get this. It's all going to be bicycles, man. We're just fucking, it's all bicycles. We're going to bike everywhere. Oh, and weed is just legal. It's everywhere. You get it in coffee shops. Everyone's going to smoke weed and it's going to be amazing. Oh, and then a sex mall. We're going to have a fucking sex mall, bros. And we're going to be, you go in and women, all, the, all these whores will be in the windows, man. Yeah. And it'll be legal, legal weed, legal this. All right, cool. Where will we sleep? Um, on boats. boats. We're gonna sleep on boats, man. We can keep our bikes on the boats. Like it's that's that's the the vibe Dude, of the whole city. I remember being twelve and hearing about Amsterdam and going like, "That is Nirvana." Like literally, shops, like boutiques with women in the window. Was it? Yeah. it tell me about the women in the window. Where, where did was it skeevy? No, it was, I wanted it to be more skeevy. But meanwhile, Sophie's being brought down there. She's taking a class. Oh, and that guy talked about that in terms of tax dollars. Also, it's, they have their crime and especially sex crime is incredibly low. And um, STDs or something. Anyway, you could Google Amsterdam, but this tour guide gave us the whole thing. Sophie's being brought by a professor who worked in in terms of regulation and monitoring it, she worked in Bangkok, which is a very official approach to the sex industry, and now is in Amsterdam teaching at the university, and they're taking a field trip to see all the doctors uh, that are, are hired to monitor the situation and the regulation, that there's no uh, sex slave trade or any of that stuff. You know, one person on this boat asked the Irish kid... Um, are they unionized? And, you know, a couple of people chuckled and he's like, no, that's a very good question. It's brought up a lot. And he goes, they actually can't be just because to be unionized. And I forget his explanation, but it was something like there that would require, I think, companies, some sort of company. And then that triggers sex trade sex oh, trafficking laws yeah, right because if they're not from this country and they come in anyway so uh they're not unionized but i think there are things like fair wages and there's a real focus on that stuff i hate being stuck in traffic but i think i'd like being stuck in sex traffic <laughs> that sounds wrong um, oh, this, uh sorry i'm sorry it's impossible to get across town with all the sex traffic <laughs> uh, that's rush hour you're never gonna make it yeah, it's bumper to bumper sex traffic. Yeah. And then the other thing is, and I have this, uh, you know, it's like being in Austria where Austria is like, uh, what? No, what the, uh, the Holocaust? What? Uh, World War II? No, I mean, no, that's Germany. Not, I mean, we were, I'm, yeah, sure. Hitler was born here and he's our most famous son. <laughs> but, and in Amsterdam, it's all like. Well, also weren't all the death camps in Austria? I guess Poland, Poland and Austria. There was only oh, yeah. one death camp in Germany, actually. That's a big argument people make about. That sounds like a Fitz fact. No, they say that why were the Germans so compliant when they knew all these Jews were being killed? And in fact, there was only one death camp in Germany. And they didn't shit where they ate. Is that what their, not, is that That's what their right. approach was? That's right. Um, <laughs> and So Amsterdam, listen, it's all about the Anne Frank house, right? Which I've talked about before. It is roomy. And uh, put it this way, it's a ninety-minute tour. Do you know how you know a ninety? You know how long the tour would be of your house or my house? Four yeah. minutes. Yeah, this right. is ninety minutes. So anyway, <laughs> is it true it's an Airbnb <laughs> on the weekends now? It should be. Well, she had food delivered, all three yeah. meals every day. Yeah. Um, and and that's the Amsterdam's identity is this Anne Frank, and I'm like, you know, I think you like the 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 Dutch resistance is famously the most overrated thing ever. 
And then all of a sudden the Germans were like, uh, hey, we'll pay you a little if you turn in Jews. And all of them were like, you got it. And that's what they did. And that's what happened. To, you know, I think that arguably that's what happened to Anne. And, and, but it's all this emphasis on one girl being hid in an attic. And it's like, you know, that doesn't wash your hands of all you wanted to be was neutral. Right. While Germany was rounding up fucking everybody. You yep. knew what was going on, and then they just came right in, and there was like, uh, anyway, I just think, and also, it's a weird thing to celebrate. It's like, it's a giant fail. It, you, you're you under the impression it was a win. <laughs> like, oh my God, you got to see, this is one of the greatest stories of, is it one of the greatest stories? Yeah. They killed that girl. Yeah, right, right. Um, but I get it. You're washing your hands. You know what? You hit a girl. You hid one Jewish girl for a little while. Good for you. Yeah. I guess you were to- your hands are totally clean on the yeah. uh, World War II sitch. Um, this week's logo, we want to thank <laughs> Br- Brian. <laughs> I mean, how much longer are we going to talk about? Um, Bruce Wise, who's a big contributor to the show, was nice enough to put together yeah. a St. Patrick's Day uh, logo that looks like us in... Um, I think What's it's a the fighting later. Irish? What do you mean? It's Notre Dame. Yeah, Irish. There we go. The song "Sugar Gliders" really groovy, nice tune. Uh, I guess the name of the band is the Sugar Gliders. So check out. Maybe they have more stuff out there. I would certainly listen to more. Yeah, no, it's very cool. Thank Sugar Gliders. Thank Bruce. It's very cool. Uh, corrections. We got a bunch because we taped early last week, so uh, they kind of built corrections up. Corrections is a section. Oh, right, here we go. We don't need graphics. Don't worry about it, Chris. But it's a section now. Uh, Steph Curry goes by Steph or Stefan. He is not Steven. Okay. Uh, fentanyl is not fentanyl. It is fentanyl. All right. Camaraderie. All camaraderie is not camaraderie. It's camaraderie. I don't like that. Camaraderie. A lot of words, like I'm forgetting, but there's good examples where you you truncate the pronunciation. You don't put that extra syllable in Wednesday. There. Worcester. Look at you. Well, Worcester is a little bit different, but there's some words where, oh, I can almost remember one in a minute. But anyway, yes. Aluminum. Mm, aluminium. Bob Pedersen sent these in, by the way. He is our favorite nitpicky corrector guy. He yeah. catches the little shit. Uh, this is from Ma- Manilo Matos. Looks like your buddies at Midcoast Media didn't edit anything on the golf story that you told golf story that you told at the beginning of the episode. Uh, it was a it was a little glitch, and uh, it was corrected very quickly, uh, thanks to the expertise of Midcoast Media. But yes, it was a number of people that noticed that we told a story that we said take that out, and if you listened early, it, it was still in there, but right. uh, it was fine. Uh, yeah. Raymond Jepsum said, you said the artwork showed you wearing ski goggles when you are wearing Apple Vision Pros. How disconnected are you guys from the media that you didn't know this? To be honest, I'm jealous. I would love to have avoided the Apple media bubble. Dude, these Apple Vision Pros, I gotta t- I've got i been out on all the gadgets at Apple. I take a snooze on most of the stuff they put out. These look pretty fucking cool. Well, I don't know about looking cool, but... No, not look cool, but they they seem like they'd be fun to wear. You know, yeah. Well, this is how disconnected we are. We, uh, we really were uh, wearing ski goggles. We weren't. We're not even wearing the uh, Apple goggles. You know, listen. Th- this is where the Apple. This is where the goggle and the VR thing is. It's like the first uh, old timey scuba divers that had a giant hose up to the boat yeah. and the big metal helmet on, and they were in a, a waterproof suit. That's what we're at now instead of like a, sl- you know, a slender little tank on our back. So these will eventually be really, really light glasses. And I guess they're betting at how much they'll change so many occupations. Like if you're a surgeon, you're going to be wearing those. And also in your vision will be AI, but it'll also be a map. They say there's already programs where you tell the goggles what 
car you're working on, you pull up the hood and it labels everything and then step-by-step instructions on how to fix wow, the problem. Wow, no shit. Yeah, yeah. So and, Damn. and it's almost like you're an astronaut with all the or a pilot with everything in the windshield, you know what I mean, with everything including the data. So and I'm well, sure you're, people you're, are rolling their eyes at my uh, Luddite type uh, explanation of this newfangled. I'm like I'm like the the uh, chimp in uh, 2001, like you know, just banging a. I don't know anything about technology. I, so, I was just ta- I was just talking about masturbation. I mean, I can't imagine oh. throwing these things on and going to town on a step mom. No, it tells you how to do it. It tells you how to grab yourself. And like, if you don't know about that, it'll walk you through it. How to clean up, how to lie to your wife about why she made the bed this morning and why why are the pillows all in one spot now? You could also see uh, your wife's car, how far away it is from the house. It's <laughs> tracking her and it's a real, it really adds to the whole rush of it. Yes. Um then Tim Dillon is it Tim Tim Dillon's the guy we played golf with, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, he's got the same name as the comedian Tim Dillon? Did uh, we ever put that together before? I don't know. Wait, huh. isn't it Dilly? Oh, it's Dilly. It's Dilly. You're exactly I I didn't I didn't think it was the same. Tim I'm Dilly, who's our names. our good friend up in San Francisco. Uh Mike Ben Bernacki was the chairman of the Fed that started quantitative easing not alan greenspan bernacki started qe in response to the 2008 financial crisis he goes on and on but uh, he says greenspan was best known for having the worst breath of anyone in dc i heard that i heard he had bad breath what is worse than someone you really like and you want to spend time with and they're is my breath ever bad mike honestly no, I've never smelled bad breath. That's my worst nightmare is that is that I've got bad breath and that because there's people I avoid and I like. There's a guy who's a comedian at the store whose breath is so bad that when I go on after him, I keep the microphone about nine inches from my face because it smells so fucking bad on the microphone. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you're supposed to tell people because there could also be a medical condition underlying it. Yes, you should tell people. Have you ever told somebody? Uh, well, it wasn't a medical condition, but at one of the late night shows I worked at, this guy was a segment producer and it was loose enough. And I also knew him really well. And he comes up to me, he's like, listen, they want to do, I'm like, dude. And he's like, what? I'm like, you know, I smelled it the other day and the other day and what it was is they're running around like crazy and then they'll run into the green room and grab like something to eat just because now they have to go talk to their uh, celebrities. And there was a hummus in there that did not do well with this guy. And I think, I think everyone, in fact, we then brought it up to catering. Like you got to get that hummus out of the green room. Yeah. No, he uh, was, I mean, it was so powerful. I will not eat onions or, uh, or garlic before I go to the comedy clubs. Good for you. Yep. So uh, Rick Schwartz says, uh, uh, I love how you both jumped on the Peloponnesian Islands as the locus of Cook South Pacific exploits. Do, am I am I drunk during the shows? Because these I'm not remembering any of these conversations that we had. I, uh, I do remember I had a brain fart. I, all I was trying to say was Tahiti, and I couldn't get it. You were probably referring to the Polynesian Islands. The Peloponnesian region is in Greece, and it's also a peninsula. Uh, also, Alexander Bell, Graham Bell, supposedly shouted to his lab assistant, Mr. Watson, come here, I need you, or something to that effect, after he spilled some battery acid on his pants while working on his phone, and Watson heard it on his extension in the next room. I don't know what we said, but... Um, I guess I we think said we said the different. first things were, will you accept a collect call from Alex? Oh, that's right. <laughs> that was correcting good. Correcting a joke. Yeah, that was a good joke. Uh, Lucia Ribeiro, who we love. Yep. I think she lives in either Vancouver or Seattle, but I met her once. She's a they. Yeah. Although okay. the phrase okay. is conventionally attributed to Marie Antoinette, it can actually be tra- le- the let them eat cake uh, phrase. It can actually be traced to Jean-Jacques Rousseau's 
Confessions in 1765, 24 years prior to the French Revolution, when Antoinette was nine years old and had never been to France. So, uh, yeah, a number of people wrote in this correction that it was not, because uh, we were talking about the president of, is it Kellogg's? That yeah, was yeah. saying that poor people should eat cereal for dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so amazing. You shouldn't even eat it for breakfast. He does not. Poor people and also guys who don't have their shit together and uh, and don't shop. None of us have to be told to eat cereal for dinner. We got it. Right. <laughs> Right. We know that's a move. That's yeah. all that's all you see Seinfeld eating uh throughout that series. Yep. Um come out, speaking of Florida, I'm gonna be in Boca Raton at Meisner, Meisner Park, April third. Uh I will also be in Tampa the next night at Side Splitters, April fourth through the sixth. Mamaronic, New York at the Emelin Theater, May thirty first. Also got dates coming up in Pittsburgh, and we got a bunch of others we're announcing next week. Go to fitzdog.com. Get yourself some tickets to come out and see live comedy. Um, the uh, support for Sunday Papers comes from Delete Me. Oh, yeah. Delete Me. I mean, look, I have been the I, I have been the victim of identity theft. Uh, we the, uh, There's a guy who's actually in jail because of it. We weren't the first one that he, I wow. guess it was a number of people. Uh, but we all get harassed. You, we, everybody, you know, you always worry about like your mom. Get this for your mom, for God's sake, or your dad if they're elderly. Um, oh, my just- dad is constantly having credit cards swapped out. He 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 answers. I mean, this is they know how to contact him. His phone number is out there. He definitely needs this to reduce uh, ways that people can get to him. Yeah, and it it, it takes uh your, your any personal information you don't want online. Uh, it's a subscription service. So, um, you know, there's all these big databases on the web that you might be on. Uh, so this is going to help prevent potential yep. identity theft. And then Delete Me sends you regular personalized privacy reports. They show what they found, where they found it, and what they removed. It's great. Yeah, I mean, you could try to do this on your own and you're going to miss things and it's a lot of work. So when you sign up, They scrub all your personal information from the data broker platforms. Uh, It's great. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Now at a special discount for our listeners. Today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash papers. Use promo code papers at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to go to join delete me.com slash papers enter code papers at checkout j o i n d e l e t e m e dot com slash papers okay we're also supported by factor which we love mm. eating God, better easy to do we've talked about factor a lot fresh never frozen meal chef crafted dietitian approved 35 different options to choose from every week. You could go calorie smart. You could do protein plus keto. I just sent it to my dad because my dad, you and I have talked about that. He's down there. He's trying to keep weight on. He's at that age. And no, and this protein plus we, we get protein plus because I mean, all me, my daughter, my wife, we're running in and out of the house for lunch and I don't want pasta i don't want a sandwich with bread this protein plus it takes two minutes because you keep it in the fridge and boom you got a lunch that's going to keep you on your feet keep you from getting tired i love it their meals are ready to heat and eat there's no prepping cooking or cleaning that's why i got it for my dad he just can't re- and i tell him he gets it i'm like yeah you put them right in the fridge if you don't think you're going to get to them throw it in the freezer and then you just reheat it they have directions on how to do that and it's so you like, sign up and save. We've done the math. It's less expensive than takeout. Every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash papers50. That's papers50. Um, you're going to use that code to get 50% off. That's code papers50 at factormeals.com slash papers50 to get 50% off. Do it. All right. 
Let's get a little paper paper crinkle. Let's get into it. Front page. got a lead story here. Are you kidding me? All right. Popular adult streaming site Pornhub is currently blocking users in Texas. Viewers who attempt to visit Pornhub.com are met with a lengthy statement from the site's owners. Quote, as you may know, your elected officials in Texas are requiring us to verify your age before allowing you to access our website. The statement reads that not only does this impinge and they give their argument that this is the least effective way to do what you're trying to do, which is prevent minors from seeing the site. And uh, the block follows a judgment on March 8th from the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruling that Texas can enforce a new law requiring this age verification system on porn websites. So sorry, Lonely Star State. Now all you closeted guys with your guns and trucks won't have your daily visit to Pornhub's gay site. Oh. Good, good luck with that. We should track the violence in Texas since this went into effect. Shots fired at Texas. It's not just Philly anymore. Gibbons is coming for Texas, baby. Oh, no. Now they're going to stand their ground against my insults, and they're going to shoot me right in the chest. Let me tell you something. Uh, you know, I know I'm supposed to be all about freedom of speech. I'm supposed to be about you know, uh, non-censorship. But you know what? If you're 18, if you're 17, 16 years old, you shouldn't need pornography. When I was a teenager, I was trying to keep from having a boner. I was trying to make my boners go away. I don't yeah. need, uh, if you can't nut at 16 without seeing like three guys banging a runaway, then something is really wrong with oh, you. Oh, I couldn't so, walk by Glamour, Ma the Mademoiselle oh, yeah. magazine. I'd go I'm, in the libraries. I remember when they would have bre self-breast exam directions for women. <laughs> Forget about it. I lost a week. Dude, Victoria's Secret catalogs, oh. those went straight into the bathroom. That's all I need. Plus, you're in Texas. You got the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. That should get you through the weekend. Sports Illustrated, uh, the swimsuit issue would come with Nivea cream wrapped yes. in it on, in that edition. That's how it was delivered to our homes. And then it, when you talk about Cosmo or L, and, and then it had the little, uh, the perfume ads where you peel it back and you can smell the perfume. So you, you rub your nose on that and then you flip over to L McPherson in the fall fashions. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Come yeah, on, young about, guys. Exactly. Go. Forget about that month. I, th I just think it's so much better for guys to go free range until they get older. Until you need porn, stay away from it. It fucks up your head. And I, you know. A... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'm just going to say, like, I know I'm supposed to be about not censoring, but pornography is fucking intense for kids at that age. It's too much. Well, you know, we when we were uh, working, David Spade had the Showbiz Show, and he would do a "There I Said It," which was just a rant, like an editorial. And I forget it was basically about the internet. I, and and but the one element he was talking about was porn at one point. And he was like, "If you told me there'd be a box, meaning his computer, that had all the world's porn on it for free." I wouldn't be standing here today. He's yeah. like, I, I'd still be in my bedroom. My mom, I would only eat pizzas because that's what she could slide under the door. And there's no way I would have tried to find my calling in this world. Like, yeah. your brain isn't even fully developed. Now add pot to that and VR yeah. goggles. What? what who's going <laughs> to do anything in the future? And- you know, like the first point, and this is going to really make me sound old, but the first time I saw any pornography was on a reel-to-reel. -reel. Uh, my best friend was David Aranguren, and he was this uh, Colombian kid who lived above his father's bodega in the projects downtown. And uh, his brother, Horatio, had a reel-to-reel -reel of some porn, and I remember watching it. Uh, all I'd ever seen was magazines, and my mother never gave me the birds and the bees talk. So when I saw two people fucking, I thought, this is so kinky. He's moving it in and out. And I got an erection. I was probably like 13 years old. And then her, uh, his brother grabbed my dick and he was like, hey, you like that? You like that, huh? Whoa. Yeah. Isn't and that weird? And then Horatio's uncle finished you off? He didn't finish me off, but he is currently in jail for cocaine trafficking.
I may, I mean, should we be editing out these names? Nope. Let him come for me. He grabbed my dick. <laughs> He's got it coming. Good Lord. All right. Next door. All, All right. right. Republicans in Arizona. It's so funny. I have these memories that I bring up sometimes when people go, that's molestation because there's a bunch of them. Yeah. A, 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 an older guy grabbed your dick and goes, hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Republicans in the Arizona state legislature have blocked Democratic efforts to get a hearing on a bill to protect access to contraception in the state with one GOP leader using sex shaming language to suggest the measure was unnecessary. The bill would enact a law affirming the right to obtain any drug device or biological biological product intended for use in the prevention of pregnancy are they aware so so no contraceptives in arizona are they aware that asu is in the state boundaries without (laughs) abortion and condoms there will be a small army of infants being raised by moms who sleep until noon and fathers who play hacky sack when they're not blowing their life savings on fan duel they're gonna have to double the amount of classrooms because all of their kids will be in the class next door when they're taking <laughs> college cl- right. classes. Oh my God! And plus, it's it's Arizona. All right, are they even going to sell to minorities, or is oh, that? I am. I know where I am on this issue. I am behind any bill that helps prevent Arizona from reproducing. <laughs> right, so right. I am against this. I they need contraception. Please. Yeah, they need to be like Maine. Somebody was telling me that all the young people have left Maine, that it's a very old state. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I, I, just read a, my... I just read a headline. I didn't, we didn't put it in, but that Florida has had a surge in homes for sale because of this insurance crisis. That, yeah, that, it's bad. And also all over the country, anywhere where there is vulnerability to climate, um, that insurance is just jacking up the prices so high that people want to sell. No, my mom uh, has a condo in Florida, and um, she now owns it outright. I, I paid it off for her. No, I'm not one of those kids, but I, I should have. <laughs> I was just going to question that. I, I, that, was, that would have been a correction next week from 40 people. Listen, no, you didn't, Greg. <laughs> I took her to lunch when we were down in Florida. Oh, that did it. She had to get the tip, but I got the I got the check. Um and then uh and then she said that so her monthly payments used to be like a thousand dollars and now they're like twenty five hundred. That's how much it's gone up. Because what's happening is they have these assess and that doesn't include the assessments, which they had to replace. You remember in Miami that the all the that building fell down and had oh some- no no oh and the whole place is being inspected now every right. every building near salt water so all of the all of the balconies because the balconies stuck yep. out from the building all of those had to be taken down Insane. and this is a five story building that's like a block long assessments scare the hell out of me like so I'm 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 renting in this building in Santa Monica. And it was built in 1980, right on the ocean also. like and, and so there's salt air issues, but I have to hear my landlord complain about oh, this assessments. Oh, the elevators now because they're 40 years old. Oh, the roof is 40 years. And like, they're just getting walloped one after the other. And it's like, you kind of, and by the way, if you move in, there's no, uh, maybe there's different, different buildings, but my understanding is when you buy a, an apartment building or a, some shared sort of, even if it's a townhouse with multiple owners, um, there's no recognition that, hey, I've been here two months. I have to pay for your 40-year-old roof? Right, right. None. You're paying the exact same as the person who's been there for 40 years. Well, it's a little bit like when I proposed to Aaron and then we got married and then she's like, oh, yeah, I got 25000 in student loans. I'm like, oh, sweet. Yeah. I got hit. I got hit with student loans also. Pre premarital premarital student loans. Yeah, uh, you don't seem that educated to me. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. She's very educated. <laughs> we had a nice time last night, didn't we? Over here, that was great. Uh, and we talked a lot about the Kate Middleton thing. We're gonna yeah. get to that. I mean, We're that gonna was gonna be to- our lead story. So, what's the deal with Gail? Gail should be calling in in 15 minutes, she said. So um, we'll get the update from her. She's very excited about it. 
I ignored um, this thing for two months. It's getting harder to ignore. Yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of the pizza, I just wanted to uh, oh, yeah. give, a sh- give a shout out to Shell's Pizza Company here in on the west side of L.A. Uh, this guy, Michael, came by last night and he dropped off like five pizzas for us that were delicious. Dude, and more than that, you also had the cheese sticks and that delicious sticks, marinara, was it, marinara. for dipping? It was really nice. And uh, thank you for the nice meal. And What's uh, his name? Michael Shells. It's Shells. Michael, man. S- thank I got S-C-H-E-L-L-Z there. C H E L L Z Pizza Company. I got there a little after. I guess they were delivered. And I had, first of all, I love cold pizzas. So I had some that were, I guess, room temperature. And then I heated some up. And they were, and you, maybe he had told you that I had to try the pineapple pizza or whatever. Yeah. And he was, and he was right. So what is it? Detroit style? It's Detroit style, which is a little bit of a deep dish, but it's, they use a, they, they, they cook the cheese partially on the outside. So it gets this nice crispy. I liked uh, it a lot. Yeah, it was good. Uh, all right. Let's talk about a South Carolina woman accused of launching a racist tirade against her black neighbors last year. It's always against, why is it the racist tirades always against the black neighbors? How come it's never like the Norwegians? You know, they were Vikings. They raped everybody. How about a little racism against the Norwegians? You know what I wouldn't mind to see? A nice surprising little twist in the tale. It's a racist tirade and it's from uh, one, like it would be me screaming at my white neighbor. Right. Cause, fuck, Cause fucking whites are the worst. <laughs> and I would just go off on that. And I would tell the journalists to like, Oh, these two neighbors, these two. I'm like, no, no, I want you to say it was a racist tirade. Yeah. I, I know I'm white. I don't give a shit. This fucking white guy's the worst. He's the worst of the worst. Yeah. And then they show you yelling at your black neighbor and you're like, no, it has nothing to do with nothing the fact do that with he's race. black. He's a fucking asshole. Yeah, but you did just say white people. Are you excusing yourself from that? Because you're yeah. a white guy yelling at No, it's different. This is different. <laughs> so He's anyway, parking on my side of the lawn. She's been arrested again this month after allegedly doing jumping jacks while naked in her front yard. I'm listening. Got to do that in the backyard. Alexis <laughs> Hartnett, 27, huh, was arrested Sunday, charged with a count of obscene exposure after a neighbor saw her doing what appeared to be jumping jacks while topless. Uh, The neighbor, a man with two small children, showed responding officers a video of the event. So he just happened to videotape the event. Yeah. How convenient. He could have made a lot more money posting that to TikTok instead of trying to give it to the cops. I spent like a good 22 minutes trying to find that clip on the internet. Yeah, I was going to say... I held my judgment till I Googled her, and I think she should go to jail. I, I it wasn't worth it. Uh, I'd still like to see the video. I oh, found so you, still I found still photos of her. Oh, you did, and not yeah, not something you want to see naked doing jumping jacks. Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> but meanwhile, what by the way, what is the uh, what is the harassment? What is the how is she punishing? This black neighbor, is it because she, it's all about boobs and not his, not her ass and it's a stereotype thing? Like, what? what is she, yeah, what, yeah. How, what is her thinking? All right, all right. Sounds and a related like wanna... story, Buckingham Palace just released video of Kate Middleton doing topless jumping jacks in no. South Carolina. No, Yeah. <laughs> we found her. Told she you should she's come healthy. back with a bang. I mean, if she's going to be missing this long, you can't just like, slide into like a a, sh- a a jaunt around the palace with a dog you gotta you gotta do topless jumping jack somewhere go to Trava- trafalgar square and do a down dog with no pants on yeah and you'll show you you'll show your how your abdominal scar is healing and everything yeah uh independent presidential candidate robert f kennedy jr is considering a short list of candidates <laughs> for his running mate that includes new york jets quarterback aaron Rodgers. And former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura. This is an onion headline that uh, is sadly not an onion headline. This, uh, let me tell you one thing. Um, Oh, okay. Aaron Rodgers will never be a presidential jet. (laughs) Well, I mean, listen, you know what I've always said? If winning is your thing, get the New York Jets involved. (laughs) 
It's, yeah. It's foolproof. Yeah. Um, the better, and they also better line up a second VP pick because the day after RFK is elected, Rogers will get injured. <laughs> I at this point, I might vote for that ticket. By the way, it's like which shit show do I want to see? I think I want to see the one where Aaron Rodgers as VP of the most powerful, but one one little heartbeat away from the most powerful seat in the world. And he's on official state tour of the Middle East. Like, no, 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 no. This is how you throw a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> you right. guys are throwing rocks all wrong. Right, right. You got to pump fake and then throw it long. Yeah. The, meanwhile, we got a no guy. Who, we got a guy who can't talk, and another guy who can't shut the fuck up. Nice. There we go. Uh, we got all a little right. quiz. Let's do it. One hundred most obese U.S. cities. Uh, America's weight problem. Centers in the what do you Deep think the south. next word was? Deep South. It is South. You are yep. absolutely right. So uh it centers in the South. So I've got the list. Um and of course the list is a little weird because I remember eh, I won't say anything. Okay. I the the cities are less important, I think, on this list than the states. So number one, what state are you going with? Mississippi, without a doubt. It's number two. Oh, McAllen, okay. Texas, number one, Jackson, Mississippi. I mean, decimal points. It's 85.54 was the score that they did. And then is that the birth Jackson, rate of the babies? Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi is 84.58. <laughs> These are the newborns. This is the neonatal <laughs> clinic where they're, they have to stay in the hospital because they're too fat. They have when to- they breastfeed, they literally suck the tit dry after like five seconds. It's the opposite. Like, look how giant this baby is. It's in the neo. I hope it makes it. It's in the neonatal unit, and uh, it's gonna. With about four or five weeks, we hope to fit it out the door. All right, third state. Third state. I'm gonna go with Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana. Hey now. I should say third city. Okay, well, uh, the fourth, and so the fourth city is what state? Fourth city is in Texas. Mobile, Alabama. Oh, how did I miss out on the the, the other deep south state? Mobile, Alabama. Okay, and, and then okay, then fifth one. Fifth one. I'm gonna say uh, Texas. Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, I Big almost rock. said Arkansas. Big almost Rock. Said it. Number six. I'm gonna go to the Midwest on this one. I'm gonna say Wisconsin. Knoxville, Tennessee. Damn. Number seven. Uh, Kentucky, Memphis, Tennessee. Wow. And then eight and nine are both Louisiana. 10 again, Chattanooga, Tennessee. What's interesting about this is Tennessee, I think has one, and I might be wrong about this, but I think it has one blue city. So in the top 10, you have Knoxville, Memphis, Chattanooga, now, to get to where I go a lot, uh, Nashville is 38. Wow. Yep. So you're equating red states with weight. Well, yes. <laughs> That's the short answer. But the headline does say like that it is the South leads the, ob- this is a quote, the South leads the obesity epidemic. And to me, the South very obviously skews red state. It also just the diet down there. It, well, I, you know, the other they argument could that. be uh, if you're in a if you're in the upper Midwest, you are not outside walking for four months of the year. Whereas if you live in the South, like you actually have like Californians are healthy because you're just walking a lot. You're outside. You're exercising. Let's see the first time we get to, all right, how about this? Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Arkansas. So there hasn't been a blue state. Tennessee, Tennessee, still, well, yeah, still uh, red. Louisiana, Louisiana, Tennessee, Alabama, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Georgia. All right. Georgia barely blue. What city, right? though? Augusta. Augusta is absolutely red. Louisiana, uh, Ohio, what Kansas, state? Ohio, what city Texas, in Ohio. Uh, it was Youngstown. That's a mob town. Oh no, sorry. There's two Ohio's. Uh, Canton was the first Ohio. Mm. 
And then, all right, we'll move this along, but North Carolina, Indiana, South Carolina, Texas. I mean, are you kidding me? Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Texas, Kentucky, South Carolina, North Carolina. I mean, what? We're at number 31 now. now what Alabama, does the article Ohio, say Ohio. about why? Why do they, what do they attribute that to? Number 34, finally, Detroit, Michigan. It's yeah. the goddamn pizza. Wow. Here you go. You ready? In our face, 35. Riverside, California. Huh. Even with all the math. Now, Riverside is Ocean is is uh, Orange County. It's Republican. Uh, no, it's out there. I know, but it's in California. I think it, Michigan and California right. at 34 and 35 might be. And it continues. Tennessee, I mean, Ohio is fucking so fat. Oh, my God. Ohio might have the most cities. I mean, Texas. How about this? 56, Hartford, Connecticut. That's wow. a weird one. Interesting. That's very right, I interesting. Think, I think we covered it. I think we got it. And fucking fat Philadelphia, you come in at sixty-seven. Hey, they got those cheese. They got those cheese steaks. Uh, Los uh, Angeles is on the list, by the way. I would not have bet. On, I was shocked. I would not have bet on Hartford. Uh, I, I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, uh, Tampa. Yeah, I would. I would have thought. I would have thought. Uh, that the I would thought Wisconsin would have been in there. I always think of Wisconsin people as being overweight. No, there's a lot of Wisconsin. You're right; they're really big though. But Los Angeles is uh, 74. All right, Back support to the- for Sunday papers comes from Prize Picks. It is uh, it's 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 demon time. You can now win up to 100 percent of your money with as little as four correct picks. Turn ten dollars. Ready for this? Into a thousand dollars. That Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. It's got three million members. Uh, it's an exciting way to play DFS. You against the numbers. You pick more. Pick them. Pick more than or pick less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Weekly projections that lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Uh, where discount select uh, prize picks, discount select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. It's like, this sounds like a lot of numbers, but I do it and I, I find it very, very usable. Um, and I want to be one of the people you play against or you play with, you don't play against anybody, but you can watch people like Meek Mill and uh, Andrew Schultz, comedian yep. Andrew Schultz. And, uh, you can use can, Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits in your account. Yep. So uh, it is. Uh, it's it's really fun. I love sports, but this makes me get so much more into sports. And it is fun to play side by side with your friends. I like the more or less because it keeps it simple. Uh, I've always liked those type of type of play. All right. Here's an example of the kind of uh, kind of uh, selections you can make. Steph Curry for more than 29 points. And uh, Nikola Jokic, is that how you say his name? Jokic? 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 For more than 10 rebounds. Anthony Davis for more than two blocks. Damian Lillard for more than 4.3 pointers made. Four three pointers made. More than four three pointers. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. Here's Gail. Uh, Let me finish this ad. Hold on one second, Gail. Hold on one second. Go to prizepicks.com slash papers and you could use code papers for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash papers. Use code papers for a first pick deposit match of $100. Uh, look, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. All right. On the phone now is Anglophile and gossip columnist Gail Gilchrist. How are you? I'm very good. I mean, I really appreciate you calling. And we've already kind of reviewed that uh, Kate's missing. There's a lot of theories flying around. And uh, Mike, do you want to just... We're she gonna can't have... hear me. Oh, can you hear Mike? No. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm going to make... Mike. Oh, wait. Now, can Hello? you talk now, Mike? Can you hear me now? Still can't hear him. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, let me let me. But you can read it, Greg. All right, I'll do it. Uh, It's going to be just me and you. Mike is going to be an. No, no, I'll ask you questions, Greg. All right, so Mike's going to ask me questions. Well, why don't no? What I'm saying is, why don't you make it easy for her? 
and read the timeline, and then okay. she can chime in anywhere. Okay, so here's the timeline. Last seen yeah. Christmas Day, is that correct? That's what, yes. Last seen Christmas Day, and then vanished. Vanishes, okay. So January 16, admitted to hospital for planned non-cancerous abdominal surgery. Does that sound right? That sounds right. Okay. Supposed to be in the hospital for only 10 to 14 days. Which uh, seems only long. 10 to 14 days. I mean, that's a long time for a young, healthy person to be in the hospital for anything. Right, right. And, you know, we've already lost, uh, what's her name? The TV star, the other princess. Yes. What's her name? Megan. Yeah, Megan. Why Markle. can't Megan go missing? Yeah, why can't Megan go missing? That's what Mike says. Yeah, she maybe she's behind this in in some way. Um, I've heard a bunch of good theories. Um, one of them involves something called Russell's signs. Have you ever heard of that? No, Russell's what's that? Sign. So it's uh, it's injuries to your fingers if you're bulimic. Um, and so it's a sim it's a it's a like a legit bulimia symptom because people bite down on their fingers when they're making themselves puke. So for a few months before she disappeared, she was spotted with band aids on her fingers, oh. which was kind of weird. Ooh. Um, and at separate at, at different times with band aids on different fingers. Yeah. So there are a lot of people who think that she has a severe eating disorder. And went into the hospital to have, uh, like, part New of her hands. stomach removed or a bowel resection or something that that stems from years of making herself throw up. Does she have um, discolored teeth? Because that's a big sign of it as well. Yeah, I don't. I haven't noticed that about her teeth. Um, but you know, her teeth are probably something that they can stay on top of. The yeah. biting her fingers, they. They can't. Now, on top of that, there's this rumor that he's been having an affair with the neighbor, Rose Hanbury, and that she demanded that the affair end, but it didn't. Ooh. And that she found out about it after Christmas and went nuts. And then he I broke her fingers. Some, I mean, I think it's And then he broke her fingers? Kind of <laughs> and then yeah <laughs> many better fingers uh um i think it's some combination of um of bulimia and other kinds of uh upper class neuroses but you know she's she's like crazy like diana was crazy maybe diana was I, crazy yeah she she turns out she wasn't all that balanced an individual no kidding all right wait what is what is? Wait, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. What do you say, Mike? What does uh, Gail think of the Spanish journalist who says that she was put in a medically induced coma? What do you coma? think about the Spanish journalist who said she was put into a medically induced coma? I don't think I don't think that's true. Um, I I think that would be better for them, obviously. But I think um, I think she's she's at a breaking point because of. I mean, think about all the pressure she's under. Hey, I'm married Just to he, Aaron. I'm married to Aaron. I know that kind of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, you got to It's hard to look that good all the That's time. That's right. I got to keep up. Uh, um, and and think about how. Oh, also, you know, Kate had that thing when she was pregnant where she had real bad morning sickness. So maybe her insides are just completely fucked. Yeah. And uh, that's my med. I mean, I'm sort of a doctor and that's my, um, my medical opinion on that. I've also read that he might be beating her up. Um, no. Well, that came from somebody who said that he's known to have an explosive temper. Like when he allegedly pushed Prince Harry into the dog bowl uh, so, you know, maybe he pushed his wife into the dog bowl. Damn. And that's going to be the name of her memoir, Into the Dog Bowl. Into the Dog Bowl, <laughs> yes. Well, there's another what? theory that says that, uh, the, um, that sh there was a death in the family, Thomas Kingston, and she's very upset about that. Um... There's another but that theory. happened. But that happened after. That was not that long ago. She's she had already been 
vanished for a month yeah. before that even happened. Okay. Um, Thomas Kingston, I did see pictures of him. He was quite handsome, I'm sure. You know, that's upsetting, but uh, I don't think she, uh, I think she probably most just cares about her figure and hanging on to her husband. Yeah. yeah. What does she think about the photo in the car? What do you think about the photo in the car? I think, uh, I think those photo, two photos in the car, one with her mother and one with him, I think they're both probably legit. I can't, I can't figure out why though this, um, the photoshopped photo was released that's that's really weird to me yeah um it's like isn't somebody standing between the royal family and their their twitter fingers i mean yeah like seems like somebody would vet that first uh and it it, it was a mess and, it, and when you first looked at the photo it looked like something was off with that photo yeah but well, wasn't the kids, wasn't the, the car kids photo were, proven the, the kids to be laughs photoshopped? Reminded me of um, of the old uh, Newport cigarette commercials, where you know the women are laughing, or is it screaming in the ads? <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> the children could be either terrified or elated. It's yeah. hard to know. Yeah, yeah, right. It's uh, yeah, it's munching. Maybe maybe the guy in the Munchen screen was having an orgasm. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, and I like that. Yeah. Um, all right. And so, have, what you, have you guys have you guys heard that she was with that? Uh, there was a meme where she was with Pete Davidson. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be amazing because how does he top himself? It's he, you right. just, it's like DiCaprio. You see the lineup and you go. You're going to fall, man. You're going to fall. Not with a princess, you're not going to fall. It was uh that was my favorite that I that I've seen. I think I think the caption said something like, "Kate, no, no." <laughs> well, it'll get her a gig hosting SNL. That's for sure. There now, you go. How and, do you think she'll also, come back? Do, do you think she's gone number 1? And if not, how do you think she'll reappear in what context? I think she'll reappear at some sort of official event. I think she will look thinner than she did before. And I think um, she will graciously thank everybody for all their support and that the whole machinery will hope that everybody's happy with that. I doubt everybody will be happy with that, but that's how I think they'll try to close the chapter. And, and she'll be she, wearing gloves. And she'll be wearing gloves, Mike said. Um, yeah. Do you think that if she does not appear again, it is the death knoll for the royal family? I think maybe. Um, I mean, I, I think that King already doesn't look like he feels very hot. Uh, I don't know what kind of cancer he has, but it's clearly, you know, unpleasant. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it might be. I think it's a problem for the whole group. I mean, from the pervy uncle, you know, yeah. to the crazy brother they i mean i think that's why people that's why i love it so much it makes my family seem like you know <laughs> kind of run of the mill i know that was never supposed to be the role of the royal family they were supposed to be aspirational not this makes me feel better yeah it's like uh they're by the grace of god it's they're they're the they're what you don't want to be but it is the best story in the world well, the it's, last... it's a soap opera gift to everybody. Yes. And the last time a queen went missing like this, it was Richard Simmons. And thank God we found him again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gail, thank you so much for calling in. And All I'll right. see you tonight at the uh, stand up comedy show. I can't wait. It's going to be really fun. Bye, Gibbs. God Bye. bless. See you guys later. All see right. ya. Damn, she knows her shit. That's no joke. Listen, Middleton, here's the problem. She should not have had her abdominal surgery in a car being chased by paparazzi in a tunnel in Paris. Like that. I know. Read your history. I know. I mean, there's Diana and then Megan is gone. I mean, this job has less security than House Speaker. This family is very good at making women disappear. Yep. I mean, that is their thing. Wow. All right. Well, listen, that was a good segment. I'm glad. Ga By the way, Gail is like one of the biggest writers in Hollywood. She's been writing on TV shows for 30 years and is a dear friend. So, we so she knows her. a good tale when it's being presented to her. Yeah, as as does our other friend.
Uh, but yes. it would be tail like T A I L. Um, <laughs> let's get to entertainment. You got it. Here we go. Let me get some paper. That's that's good. Paper. Great news that I'm very excited about is Neil Young is bringing his music back to Spotify because he said Apple and Amazon have started serving the same disinformation in podcasts <laughs> that drove him to quit Spotify more than two years ago. He said he can't boycott everybody because then his music would have no uh, streaming outlet to music lovers at all. If you remember, he pulled himself off Spotify uh, be- to protest Joe Rogan and uh, and then um, he was in, you know, look, he's, he, I, he still shits on Spotify. He's like, I know Spotify this that- is the most negative statement. It, it may be more negative than the statement he made when he quit Spotify. He said, Spotify, the number one streamer of low res music in the world. <laughs> Spotify, where you get less quality than we made, will now be home to my music again. <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing. He really, well, he gave in though. He really puts the Neil and Neil Young. Oh, I'm just happy he's going to be back on there. I know, I missed having him on. I listen to a lot of Neil Young. And and if Joe Rogan does not open every episode this week with a Neil Young song, he's absolutely crazy. Oh, that's a great, did you give him that idea? No, I should text him that. You should text him that. He never spoke ill of him. After the whole incident, he just said, hey, I'm a fan. Sorry, he's not on the channel anymore. He he, didn't, he should he open didn't up with him. "Keep on Rocking in the Free World," which uh, is also a, you know could be a motto of Joe's. Yeah, right. Um, um, I told you my uh, my I went to see Neil Young last summer. Brief version because I've already told yes. the story, but I took magic mushrooms and I sat down <laughs> and it was Neil playing like like he called it a room in his house that people rarely go into. That was his selection of songs for the night. He had an up, it was, and it was at the Greek theater, which is nestled in the bosom of Griffith Park. It is the most lush, beautiful, You're in the woods. pastoral, you're in the woods. And it's small, there's a few thousand people, and it's a really mellow, music-loving crowd. He's got an upright piano, a guitar, and a bunch of harmonicas. It's just him, it's intimate, it's his living room. And uh, and we're get grooving. My mushrooms are kicking in, and then these three fucking frat guys sit down next to me, and they proceed to just smoke joint after joint, drink beer after beer. They're so loud. One of them throws up on the woman in front of him, and my trip went from from perfect to utter nightmare where I left early. Well, at least you were getting the high quality sound live. That's right. Not the low quality Spotify sound. It is are we true. On, are you, we on Spotify? I would imagine. Oh, I love them then. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we get to our Oscar predictions, I did want to say I had this interesting experience. So across my feed, these clips would come and it had who I think is the, I think he's the person that makes me laugh the hardest in the world right now. Paul Walter Hauser. He was in I, Tanya and stole the movie, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that guy. Oh, my God. He is uh, a heavy guy. It's like a Galifianakis type thing. But he he's also in a sketch on I Think You Should Leave. He is just steals every movie he's in. So anyway, these clips would come across my feed with he and Vince Vaughn. And I'm like, what movie are he and Vince Vaughn in? And so I found it, and it's Queen Pins, a 2021 American comedy, and it stars Kristen Bell and Kirby Howell uh, Baptiste, and it's about these women. Anyway, here's the short version of my experience. The scenes with Paul Walter Hauser were so funny, and then uh, Vince Vaughn didn't come in until like a half hour or whatever, and then I would like find myself sitting through the scenes that we're talking about all the coupons and stuff. And then I eventually started fast forwarding and not watching the scenes. And listen, we know Kristen Bell's funny and this uh, Kirby Howell Baptiste, you know, funny enough and all that. But the scenes, when you had this guy, Paul Walter Hauser and Vince Vaughn, 
it was like a different movie. They didn't even put like jaunty music in there. It was just a scene with the two of them in the car. And I think it was one of those, which is what they would do on Hangover, as we know from Zach and those guys, is, yeah, we'll do the scene as written in the script, right? In case like there's a plot point we're forgetting about, it needs to be covered. But also then, once we got it, we're going to have some fun with it. And we're going to improvise. And I think that's what happened in every scene they did. And it was night and day. It was two different films. And I was howling with the scenes with Vince Vaughn and this Paul Walter Hauser has expressions. I, I rewound it two or three times. I rewound it to watch what he did. Wow. I got to see this. Yeah. I, I, I could watch that guy. Maybe you should edit it together and put it out as a half a movie. I would be the most woman hating and it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, if it's, you know, uh, who, who do I love uh, from, from Mike and Molly and all that. Uh, she's one of the funniest people on the planet. Kristen, she, uh, 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 Melissa she McCarthy. She would have stolen the show. What? Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. I mean, listen, I, I think some of the funniest people in the world are women, actually. The crazy, I mean, all the crazy actresses on Saturday Night Live, like, I'll watch anything they do. Uh, Maya Rudolph is great. Oh, Maya Rudolph, I'll, I'll watch do anything. I, yeah. I sent everybody that when she was just making noises, doing the na- making fun of how people sing the national anthem at the Super yeah. Bowl. Right. I, I, I watched that, I think, five times. But yeah. anyway, this, it, it's a great way to watch a movie. I mean, it's I, I, I mean, you probably have it down to 35, 40 minutes, and it's called Queen Pins. Anyway, all, all right. right, let's get Good. to the Oscar picks. All right, we made picks last week for the Oscars, and now we're going to see who got more rights. It is close, my man. Here we go. Best picture. We tied. We both picked Oppenheimer. Best Director, same thing. Christopher Nolan, both of us. Actress in a leading role. Uh, I, we both, oh no, I thought you took, we, no, I went back and I watched the tape. You said Emma Stone will come in second. (laughs) I did? Yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. You were wrong. She came in first. Yeah. We both thought Lily Gladstone would do it. Yeah. Uh, I have a buddy of ours who I will, uh, I will not name. And he goes, he won the office pool at work in a talent agent, a talent and an agency that does even more than talent, represents writers and everything here in L.A. And everyone, of course, picked Lily. And he didn't. He's like, she's an Indian woman playing an Indian woman. And <laughs> he got in trouble in his office. And then last night, we'll just call him Jay, a friend of ours, goes, uh, yeah, and she played a sleeping person for most of the movie. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, oh, that was an exhausting performance she turned in. That was a lot of being sick. Yeah. So she, right, she did not, uh, we both missed uh, actress in a leading role. Actor in a leading role, here's where you take the lead. I guess Jeffrey Wright, you dre- uh, guessed Killian Murphy. You're up one. Now we have actress in a supporting role. You chose Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer, and I chose Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. We're tied again. We're tied. Actor in a supporting role. Uh, You chose Robert De Niro. I chose Ryan Gosling. Robert Downey Jr. won. That was a shocker. That was a shocker. Still tied, although we won the Golden Globe. We're still tied. Original screenplay. We both guessed past lives. It was Anatomy of a Fall. How do we miss that one? So we're tied. Adapted screenplay. We both guessed Oppenheimer. It was American fiction. Mm. We're still tied. We skipped international movie. We skipped animated feature. You actually wanted to bail at this point, but we chose documentary feature. We both guessed 20 Days in Maripol, so we're still tied. That was correct, right? Maripol? Yes. Original score. I guess Killers of the Flower Moon, because I think I thought uh, maybe, uh, what's his name, Robbie Robertson was part of that, uh, because he was part of the sound in the movie, the the music. And then you guessed Oppenheimer, and you won. So you're up one. Nice. We skipped original song. We went to cinematography, and you guessed Killers of the Flower Moon. I guessed Oppenheimer. I won. Oh, so we're tied. We're tied again. And then you didn't want to do anything else. And I had to beg you, we should have one more in here. 
And what did we choose? We chose documentary short, and we just had a bet on what it sounded like. <laughs> and I chose Nai Nai and Wipo, and you chose The Last Repair Shop, which won. Nice. Is that $100? And by the way, if I had known, The Last Repair Shop is about the last shop in L.A. that fixes and maintains all the musical instruments for all of the Los Angeles music programs in the public high schools oh and, and public God. middle schools. Yeah, that's why I picked it. I thought that was profound. You bastard. So you won based on goddamn documentary. How sport. much money we both did we did bet? Horrible. Huh? How much money did we bet? Uh oh yeah, did we bet money? I would guess I we always bet money. Well, yeah, you're right. We normally, but we'll go back and check it. All right, we'll go back and check. Uh, let's go to Florida. It's time to go to Florida, baby. I was go, just Florida. there. You're about to go there. Florida is a big part of our lives right now. Florida. Florida man. Says, I, I don't really have any jokes here. It's just fascinating to me. Florida man suspected of kidnapping girlfriend surrenders after a 20-hour standoff. So, he was suspected of tackling his then-girlfriend and throwing her inside a vehicle. He barricaded him, himself inside a home in, yes, you guessed it, the Villages, Florida. Yes. Leading to an hours-long standoff with police and law enforcement. James Savage, not a great name oh, in this boy, case. Oh, boy, that's not going to help in court. The suspect is accused of punching and tackling his then-girlfriend, 60-year-old Maravel Dunn, outside a home late Thursday night and forcing her inside a vehicle before driving off. Savage was found barricaded inside the home on the north end of the villages. What is up with the villages? And it's always the north end. The north end is the crazy part. <laughs> the Here's bad the part thing. of town. This is such a not big deal in Florida. This is just a guy tackling his girlfriend, putting her in a car. That's like subtle. That's like when a girl goes to another girl, I think he likes you. <laughs> well, one thing they quoted is, I guess he said like, uh, get in the car or I'll kill you, something like that. And it's like, yeah, I, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all said that line. All right. And then he tackled her. The, the Buccaneers could use this guy. They need a new outside linebacker. Although, I, I, I think I'd go I with a one-year contract. That. What's that? I think I'd go with a one-year contract on that one. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I've um, i never said it to uh, a wife or someone I'm dating, but I don't know if this is a good defense, but I've said get in the car, I'll kill you to my daughters like almost every time I've been in the car with them. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, uh, here we go. We're going to make Georgia, Florida. Oh, that, I'm wearing that paper out. We're moving. Oh, well, I have more crisp ones. All right, making Georgia, Florida. All right, I love this. A Georgia woman's cat was found a mile from her home after seven years. Liz Gillespie said her Siamese mix, Kevin Durant, who is named for, can you guess, basketball star Kevin Durant <laughs> went missing from her rock spring home about seven years ago. She said, I live next door to 30 acres in woods. And so I just kind of assumed that maybe a coyote had gotten him. And I really didn't think he was out there after so long. I kind of didn't have any hope left. She said she was shocked to receive a call from the Walker County animal shelter reporting that Kevin had been found. She's like, I just assumed he got, you know, went to Phoenix to play ball. That he was traded to Phoenix. That's why he was never around anymore. Officials told the uh, told her the feline had been brought in for testing after a confrontation with a local child, and the vets discovered that he was neutered and microchipped. She said Kevin had been living with feral cats uh, only about a mile from her home, and she said he is currently resting and getting to know his way around the house again. Yeah, he's posting up in the paint in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, He's getting done. Right. You know what the cat's really doing? It's looking for getaway. Like what windows loose? This you don't think this cat knew where the house was? Right. Take a hint. Take a hint, lady. This is not a house cat. The, the house cats don't run away for nine years and yeah. join up and join up with the ferals. He's feral. He's got tattoos now. He's got a meth habit. Why do you think he attacked that fucking kid? He's <laughs> jacked up on meth. And you yeah. And good luck, because the other you think the other feral cats don't know that uh, that Kevin has got got a home with free food. 
They're going to start swinging by for dinner, not leaving. Her problem was she thought she could contain Kevin Durant. That's right. Are you kidding me? No, no. Legend. Yeah. All right. Uh, We are moving on. We already did Kate Middleton in our international story. Let's go down to this day in history. This day in history. Here we go. That is crisp paper, I'm telling you right now. All right, so this day in history. If people are new to the show, this has turned into a quiz where Mike gives me the event, I tell him the year that it happened. All right, I'm not going to give you a range on this. You're just going to have to get close, okay? I know, I like the range. I like the range. On this day, Mississippi ratified the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery... Uh, after it was added to the U.S. Constitution. Okay, I'm going to say 1876. All right, so <laughs> this is why I didn't do give you a range, because I was going to tell you, give or take 100 years. What? It Mississippi ratified the Abolished Slavery Amendment in 1995. No! What? <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Yeah. I How mean, is that fairness, possible? In fairness, it was not made official. Uh, and then it was, by, oh, by the way, 1995, but then it wasn't made official until 2013. I don't know why I said in fairness. Wow. All right. Well, they're fat. Maybe, maybe they, could, years, they couldn't. They couldn't get to the uh, to the city capital. They, they did were, it 130 years after it was added to the U.S. Constitution. Damn. damn. Baddies. Well, you're going to get this. I'll give or take a year. Okay. The U.S. Marines on this day captured the Japanese island of Iwo Jima during World War II. 1945. Nailed it on the nipple. Nice. Okay. On this day, American comedian Jerry Lewis was born. I mean, yeah, on this day, in what year? Uh, I'm going to say... Oh, I'm going to say give or take five years. I'm going to say 1937. Oh, my God, you missed it. 1926. No! Yes. Damn. Do you know that him uh, and... uh, uh, What's his name? Uh... Martin, Dean Martin, they were the highest paid comedians in the world because they used to do, there was a thing in New York where all the big theaters, like the Ziegfeld, they used to show movies like, and and before the movie, there was a live performance. Like comedians would go up for 20 minutes and they would do a show. So noon, two o'clock, well, whatever, noon, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, those guys got up and they performed together Six days a week, they did their routine, and they were making back then like a million dollars or two million. It was crazy. Nice. And that would have been um, in probably the 50s, late 40s, 50s. Uh, I just realized, by the way, I was reading today, today, March 16th, but uh, it's this, you're, you're just guessing the year. It's fine. Um, okay, let me, how about America? This is a little close to... American author Nathaniel Hawthorne, mm. his book, The Scarlet Letter, was published on this day in what year, give or take 20 years? Uh, 30 years, give or take 30. 1850. It's 1850. No, really? I'm not kidding. Damn. I'm on fire. Man, man, oh man. I was an English right. major and I love that book. Uh okay. Today, Saint Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, he died on this day in what year, give or take two hundred years. See, there this is a bullshit question because there it's very nebulous who Saint Patrick was. There really wasn't uh, a lot of info on who he was. He was kind of an archetype. He wasn't, some say he didn't even really exist. Right. So, so it does say according to legend. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to go way back. I'm going to say 1640. It was so close. 461. 
<laughs> my God. I gave you 200. I gave you a 400 year I window. 12, and you couldn't do it. I needed 1,200 years to be right. Um, let's see here. Okay, Nat King Cole mm. was born on this day, give or take 10 years. Uh, 1915. Jesus, 1919. Nice. You I just well, I know because I just watched him on reruns when I was with my mom in Florida. They have this channel called We TV where they show reruns of old shows, and we watched a bunch of Ed Sullivan shows. And Nat King Cole would come on. Holy shit! It was live TV. And this dude would come out and do a medley of three songs where he would walk to the piano, play, get up, croon, uh, do a duet with somebody. He was so mega talented. It was incredible. It's It really is incredible. Uh, I should know this. Uh, a we Take and Request. And what a voice. Insane voice. I think voice. it's called like we, oh, oh, we Take Request. I'll look it up. But anyway, uh, there's a legend that he was as good a piano player as I'm going to look it up. We take requests, but, um, you know, who else and, was an amazing piano player was Nina Simone. Oh, I didn't know that. She was a trained concert pianist, went to college for it. We get requests, maybe, uh, hold on requests. And, um, I have the album and it's great. So anyway, that the, I guess maybe they were with the same label or whatever. And they're like, listen, one of you has to pick guitar and both of them had incredible, I mean, piano. Both of them had incredible voices and were incredible piano players. And are like, you got to pick a lane. And so Nat King Cole went voice. And, oh, yeah? Yeah. And Oscar Peterson, who was widely considered to be one of the greatest pianists ever, he he leaned into that. But as you just said, you, you saw Nat King Cole on piano. Apparently, he was phenomenal. He was amazing. And his song... Uh, he, that was our, our wedding song. Me and Aaron's first dance was unforgettable. And and that was the song because on our first date, we were in the Bowery, we're on the Lower East Side and we're walking down the street and we just held hands for the first time. And then this homeless guy was standing there and he was singing unforgettable and we stopped and I gave him some money and we slow danced to unforgettable. I know. I remember him at the wedding. He was sweating his ass off. That would have been nice. All right, last one. Uh, all right, Eleanor, I just like the detail in here. Uh, on this day, Eleanor Roosevelt, the niece of President Theodore Roosevelt, married her distant cousin, Franklin, on this date, what year? Give or take 15 years. Oh, this is easy. Um, I'm going to say 1917. Uh, you dick. 1905. Nice. <laughs> you barely, <laughs> barely. I knew you'd go high on that. Damn. So they were, she was fucked. She was an old first lady for somebody who got so much done. So she no, must have been born and in like they, 1890. They the, and then they were in the White House forever. Yeah. Wow. All, All right, right, let's dude. get down to a uh, very sad one. We're going to do obituaries right now. And that's all, folks. This is a guy that uh, was near and dear to your father and you as well, uh, an icon in the Irish community, Irish-American community. Oh, no, was he born in Ireland? Uh, no. Yeah. I think you, oh, I, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah, they, they were. They, they moved back to Limerick. Yeah. Uh, well, because Angel's then, Ashes is about his Frank's childhood in, uh, was it Limerick? Yes, Limerick. Okay. For sure. And he was on the Upper West Side. He's 92. He went into hospice, and then they kicked him out of hospice, which we talked about, I think, like oh, six months ago. we should say his ago. name, Malachi McCourt. Malachi McCourt. Oh, I thought we talked about, sorry, yeah. And Frank McCourt, his brother, who was the author of Angel's Ashes, and he taught down in Stuyvesant High School. Um, and Malachi was just this raconteur and a kind of legend. And he had a bar, Malachi's, and he uh, he was a barkeep there. And he also has a memoir, which was best selling. And Tiz, he, uh, right? What's that? Was it called Tiz? No, that's Frank's follow up. Oh. Uh, 
Yeah, no, no. His was called, was it Fishes? Uh, hold on. Um, I should know that. Death anyway. Need Not Be Fatal? That's oh, yeah, one. Oh, Singing My Hymn Song. And then, uh, I forget the other one, but that maybe that was his memoir. But anyway, just amazing. And he was in that unbelievably creative scene um, when even the Stones came to town and everyone would be down and, and Pete Hamill and all the literary guys would be, and Dylan, they'd be down at the lion's head and in the village and the, the Clancy brothers were there and everything. Um, so I, you know, just, you can go and read the, obi- any obituary you want. The New York times has a giant one and his story as a young child. He was Frank's younger brother, um, in Angela's ashes. Like he should have been dead about 20 times before he was three years old. And here he is living till 92, um, which was amazing in, in Manhattan. So anyway, yeah, we knew him. Uh, he was fantastic. He, he was at my wedding uh, and he's just, a, he sung at my uncle's funeral. He would always like, you know, there's that saying, sing for your supper. And he always would kind of in a way like earn his keep and bring a room together. And uh, yeah, he was just amazing. It's just a part of New York that it's so sad to see it go when you see, Somebody like him die and, you know, Pete Hamill and Jimmy Breslin and, uh, you know, it's just like, I don't know that these people are being replaced by people that understand their history, that understand how to be charming and light up a room. And I like that sing for your supper kind of mentality because my father had that. It was like, you went to a you party, you were, you were, well, I try, but you're expected to be entertaining and to lift up the room. That's your gift. Some people... Uh, some people bring good food. Some people bring great wine. And for some people, you're just, you you know, your job is to uh, tell great fucking stories. Yeah, they said uh, distinguishing between Mr. McCourt's stories and his lies was a fool's errand. Both were so spellbinding. Amazing. He, he had all these funny quotes. He would say, live every day like it's your last because one day you'll be right. Um, and he famously, he and his brother, rejected the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So I guess we can talk about that. Interesting. Rejected the St. Patrick's Day Parade because of the Catholic Church and especially their ostra, you know, ostracizing gays. Oh, wow. And so there was an alternative New York St. Patrick's Day Parade, I believe in Brooklyn, and those two guys who were like very celebrated would, would go over there. Um, yeah. Yeah, it says here that he was also played a big role in shutting down the Willowbrook Home for Children on Staten Island where rampant abuse had been exposed of the kids. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And so, he was, the, re- the reason, by the way, other than Frank McCourt's brother, but he was he was an actor who was in a, li- a lot of things. I guess most notably the soap opera Ryan's Hope. Uh, he was in a bunch of different um, films. Oh, Monk Swimming is, is one of his uh, books as well. Yeah. Um, and let me see. Here's what a nice else note to, to go out on. Maliki's son, Connor, confer- who I met, I hung out with him in, yeah. in Venice, a really sweet guy, uh, confirmed his death and added that his father was listening to a recording of Will Ye Go, Lassie Go by the Chieftains, a song he would often sing when he died. Oh. Nice. That's very nice. All right, let's um, cheer up. Okay, let's cheer up. Here we go. <laughs> Here's the Sunday funnies. We got Hagar sitting at the bar talking to a woman. Uh, she looks despondent. He goes, isn't that your boyfriend sitting at the end of the bar? She goes, I broke up with him. He's a jerk and he'll never, ever change. And then a wizard comes over and she turns into a frog and he goes, I was eavesdropping. <laughs> well, first of all, define in these times, in medieval times, in fucking Norway, what is a jerk? Because the bar is pretty low. Yeah. You know, like what? He doesn't call an Uber after he molests you with his eight marauding friends. And if you don't think that's what the wizard is up to now. Right. He stepped right in. He removed He removed his competition. Uh, We got the Lockhorns. Leroy and Loretta are in a car dealership with the salesman. Leroy says, we can't buy a self-driving car unless it pays for itself. (laughs) Cute. And then they're at an ice cream truck, and Leroy is getting a cone, and he says to Loretta, 
What do you mean I don't have to worry about brain freeze? Slam! <laughs> you got slammed, Leroy. Totally got slammed. You know, something reminded me of uh, this comic strip. I'm going to send it to you. It's so hysterical. It came on my feed and it said, Norman Fell is the first ballot uh, on the Hall of Fame of breaking the fourth wall. And it's from, um, wait, let me move this down. It's all these lines. Wait, let me just give you a line or two. It's literally this comic strip and it's, it's from um, Three's Company. You ready? Are you kidding? That's a great likeness. <laughs> I'd recognize your mother any place. <laughs> and then he looks to the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a, a lot of it is like she asks about her makeup, and he's like, I think it needs a few more coats. And then he looks at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what else? He was in something else that was big. We were just talking about Was it you I was talking to Norman Fell no. about? Just what? talked about him the other day. Was he in The Graduate? Yes, he was in The Graduate. Yeah, he was also... Was he in 12 Angry Men? I Probably not. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. You, right, you look it up while I do another Lockhorns. Leroy is working on his laptop with his phone in his hand. He is gritting his teeth. And uh, Loretta says, when left to his own devices, Leroy can't figure out how to use them. <laughs> That's not bad. That's good. Uh, All right. Denman Norman Fell, Three's okay. Company. Uh, and the Ropers, Ocean's Eleven in 1960, The Graduate in 67, and Bullet in 68. Oh, Bullet. Yeah. I mean, tons yeah. of stuff. It's a mad, Inherit mad, 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 the mad wind. world. Huh? Inherit the Wind. And Denman also wrote down he was in Ellen. So he, I bet he's got some stories. He was in The Killers, A Mad, 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 Mad World. Oh. Uh, Yeah. Okay. All right. Welcome to the old man's podcast. Let's do a little family circus. Shaking it up this week. Oh my God. I just threw it in here because, all right. So I went, I saw this family circus and I'm like, I'm going to put it in because I have no idea what it means. Of course. But then I try to look up today's the 17th because we're recording this on Saturday, the 16th. And I go to click on it because I see the date and it goes, Oh, do you want to pay and subscribe? Can you imagine yeah. paying and subscribing? Not only are they free the day of, but you want to get ahead on Family Circus? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this one is the grandmother leaning in, blowing out all the candles on her birthday cake, and the two kids, the, the daughter with the red hair and then the pudgy son or whatever, the young guy there, he... They're around her at the table, and I guess the boy's pie hole is open, and it's going to be a pie hole in about three seconds. And he, I guess, says, don't worry, Grandma. Maybe your wish will come true anyway. Yeah. What? what? Is, yeah. Is that like masquerading as a clever statement? Is that, is it, it, does it have the feel of a clever statement, but it's not? Oh, wait a minute. I, is it that she's so old that the flames don't go out on the candles? Oh, because they're... Oh, I, I guess the... Yeah, that's not very clear, but you're right. They're still lit. Yeah, I think that her breath couldn't quite put out the candles. Can I cut oh, to... So oh, it's, so it's not... It's actually not clever uh, at all, what he said. All right, so I guess the other, she can't blow out candles. Okay. I just went to the site Archimax where I get all the comic strips from and they have a comment section. People read the cartoon and then they get on a chat room to discuss it. Here's some of the comments. Flamingo says, Grandma's wish came through. She's with her grandkids, exclamation point. Oh my God. Uh, and then Susan Newman, who's a little edgy, she wrote, you don't know what she wished for. Maybe to permanently get rid of the melon heads. Oh, all right. Um, Norisome said, with my senior discount, I get two blows. I bet your husband's happy to hear that. Yeah, what is what is that? Yeah. Um, Grandma, right. nope, you're still here. What, what website has the comments? 
uh, Archimax. All right. I like it. I might go there. Uh, all right. Good. Um, all right. Let's get to some Blondie. Jesus Christ. The lights are dim. The room is blue. Blondie is in bed with Dagwood, who has his back to her. She's mm-hmm. wide awake. If she has a pulse and she's in that bed, you should be facing her, fondling her, whispering in her neck. Instead, he's got on fucking donut pajamas and he's faced away sleeping. And she's got on a raspberry negligee with frills hanging off one shoulder. Yeah. Bosoms lunging towards him. And she goes, honey, I hear a noise downstairs. I hope it's not that mouse again. He goes, it's probably nothing. And then she goes, I hope those brownies on the kitchen counter will be okay. And then he jumps up and goes, then again, you never know. That's what gets you excited? Some fucking brownies? How about some blondies? I have two theories. I yeah. like it. He should be eating blondies. Two theories. One, she, she's just carving out some buzz time. She's going to take care of herself. Oh, and right. Right now, she needed him out of the bed because he's useless and he's going to judge her. Yeah. Or two, she heard my advice on how to kill your spouse. So now she grabs the gun and she calls 911 and says, there's an intruder. My husband went down to check the noise. There's an intruder in the house. Oh my God, he's coming up the steps. He killed my husband. And then she shoots this guy, oh, her like husband, it. right in the head. I would like it if she shot him in the head and then laid back and took the still warm barrel of the gun and crept it between her legs and brought herself to completion as the police were on their way. That is a wild fantasy. Yep. And I had it. All right, listen, wild. Mike, it's been an amazing show. Hour and 45 <laughs> minutes. I hope we kept our audience. You can always, yeah, we can actually look online on the app and see how long people actually listen for. But I didn't know that. If you made it through, uh, I check don't out. I want to see that. Check out Fitz Dog Radio this week. I have uh, Preacher Lawson on. He was great. Uh, had some good guests lately. Also, don't forget uh, to support our sponsors. Uh, go to joindeleteme.com slash papers and get yourself 20% off. You can also go to Factor Meals 50 and get 50% off. And then you can go to, uh, who is our other sponsor? Oh, yeah. Prizepicks.com slash papers. Yep. And you're going to get a first deposit match of $100. Uh, thank you to Midcoast Media for doing a great job, Chris Denman. And uh, I guess we'll – you got anything you want to promote, Mike? Yeah, go watch half of the movie Queen Pins. There you go. And you don't even know to you, – you can follow the plot, trust me. You don't even need – you maybe watch the first few scenes and, yeah, they're going to use coupons and it's a scam and the authorities are on to them, but then just watch those two guys. I love it. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for hanging with us, you guys. We'll see you next week. Take it ish. Take it ish. Well, it's the Sunday papers with Mike and Greg. So get.